Hi guys, in today's video we'll talk about layering a wooden bow. It's a crucial stage of the bow building process, requiring a lot of care and precision. The future of the weapon, its efficiency and performance depends on it. In the video I'll share my thoughts and tips about the process of layering traditional bows. Moreover, we'll take a closer look at a few examples of great and poor layering job. For more bow making tips and complete instructions, check out my new ebook, Bow Making Basics. You will find the link below the video. Also, there are plenty of free videos on my channel focused on the other stages of the process. Ok, but now let's get into the video. Tilling a bow, the bowyer is turning the stick into the weapon. To start this process, the bow has to be roughed out and close to the final dimensions. What's more, it should be properly seasoned to avoid taking a lot of set and cast decrease. During tillering we are bending the stick further and further, after each inch examining the bend and scraping some wood off from the stiff spots. The boyer can't rush at this stage, patience is the key. After examining the bend it's good to mark spots requiring more work with the pencil. For many it might be obvious but it can prevent basic mistakes like scraping the wrong limb. Great tool when it comes to the tillering is a card scraper. The bow you're using it has a full control on wood removal and can make it very precisely. Getting this tool was a game changer on my bow making path, so I can truly recommend it. Also, the scale is very helpful here. I use the fishing one. Working on the band, we scrape off the wood from the belly, but also from the sides. Remember that removing material from the belly causes more significant pandage decrease than taking it off from the sides. That's why when you are close to the target draw weight and the band isn't still there, consider working on the sides. To remain durable, the growth ring on the back of the bow has to stay intact on the whole length of the weapon. As a reminder, we are talking about self bows made from staves here. When it comes to board bows, the growth ring's orientation is slightly different. It has to be emphasized that well tillered bow isn't equal with perfect looking band. Particular wood piece flaws like knots, snakinesses and wavy grain are affecting visual tiller. They don't necessarily have to be a serious problem, but they have to be taken into account by the bowyer. So dealing with such full of character wood, we should be especially careful and not let us be mistaken but what we could consider uneven bend. Back to the point. The goal is to make the bow bend evenly on the entire working part of the limb. Nevertheless, the wider limbs are, the more they can take. So, a lot also depends on width tapering and we have to remember about it to learn a bow. Pyramid bows with much wider limbs at fades and narrow outers should bend the most in the inners. The nearer to the tips, the stiffer they should be. Some designs are coming with stiff sections that are being left like that intentionally. The Molecabet bow is an example of such a weapon. It has long, narrow, stiff tips and very wide working part of the limb. The completely different example is an English long bow. Those sticks are bending on the whole length, even on the handle. Their profile is narrow with rounded belly. We call such a tiller circular. Tillering my bows, I do it in a few steps. The first one is basing on chasing proper thickness and width taper, without bending limbs. The more experienced the craftsman is, the more accurately he is able to do it. Once we got it, we are moving on to the floor clearing. Now we are pushing limbs into the work, holding the tips on the floor. I like to use my vise instead, clamp the bow at the handle and push the limbs into the work. Anyway, we are marking stiff spots, scraping them off and pushing it further and further. And we repeat it over and over again. Once the band is looking balanced, we are moving to the long string tillering. We put the weapon on the tilling tree and pull it with the loose bow string. It prevents overstressing the weapon. At this point, 
when the band might be far from being perfect. We proceed the same way as before, step by step, until it's bending fairly nice. Then we can string the bow. Its profile just after stringing can tell us a lot. If any limb will be stiffer, we'll see it clearly right away. After balancing the strong profile, the bow should be back on the tilting tree. We pull it, inch by inch, applying corrections after each drawing session, until we'll reach the full draw. If during the process any set is appearing, we should slow down and examine it. The spots that limbs are taking set are overstressed. We should put more work on the remaining limb sections to balance it. Now let me tell you a few rules that I'm obeying tilering my bows. Never pull the bow over the target draw weight. It will prevent overstressing the piece of wood. Use the mirror or camera to see the band from a different angle. Our eyes tend to deceive us and make the faulty band looking good for us. Seeing it from another perspective helps to notice any defects. Take a break after a long tilering session, or come back another day. Fresh eyes are sharper. After each applied correction, pull the limbs a few times to let the wood adapt to the new thickness and width taper. Judging the tiller, remember to take into account both unbraced profile and the design. The full draw length shouldn't exceed the length of working part of the single limb. So for example, 16 inches bow working on the whole length, if well tillered, it can be drawn up to 30 inches. It should be emphasized that we are talking about self bows here. Now let's take a look at a few tillering examples. We'll start with the hazel bow you are seeing right now. It's one of the first bows I've ever made. As you can see the unbraced profile was pretty straight. The bow had similar width on the whole length and rounded belly. I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty poor tillered by me. It works mainly at inners. At the marked spots some compression fractures appeared. Nevertheless the bow survived, but I would be scared to shoot it right now. The other one is maple flat bow. As you can see there was a serious weak spot just behind the handle. It was also one of my older builds and I haven't noticed the weak point early enough. This one wasn't so lucky and it ended up as a firewood. And here we go with another hazel bow. This one was built in pyramid style. Nevertheless the tilering was a bit off here. The upper limb is too stiff, especially inners. Despite it, it hasn't taken too much set and performed pretty well. Now let's see some balanced bends. This one was made from yew wood in a flat bow style. It has stiff handle and pretty wide limbs for a wood. It took only a bit of set and still is one of my fave builds ever. The other one is a record flat bow. This one is for sure one of my most popular designs. It was built from red oak wood and bent into pretty aggressive recurves. Tilering recurve bows might be pretty tricky, but I just love it. To master tilering traditional bows, it takes countless hours spent in the shop and many either finished and broken bows. Each wood piece is a different story that requires an individual approach. That's all for today guys. For more content check out my other videos and the ebook. Thank you for watching guys, bye.